Hollywood, California presents Chapter 4 of the life and good works of the Doctor of River's End. The star of the show, Gene Herschel, in his greatest of all roles. The title of the show, Dr. Christian. The sponsor of the show, the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. As Paul Christian, the doctor of River's End, Gene Herschel brings you another absorbing half hour of human drama. The story today opens in the doctor's reception room towards the close of a busy afternoon. Now, Hank, what's the matter with you? Well, Doctor, I feel terrible. Pardon me, but I... I think Mrs. Spears is ahead of Mr. Morrow. Oh, I can wait. I'm simply here to see the doctor about the charity bazaar. That's all right, Mrs. Spears. Now, you go right ahead, because I'll be talking to the doctor a long time. I've got lots of things wrong with me. Well, thank you, Mr. Morrow. Will you come in here, Mrs. Spears? Oh, yes, Doctor. Not having indigestion again, are you, Hank? No, Judy, this time it's a curious ailment. I eat regular three times a day, but I haven't worked for weeks. That's not an ailment. That's an achievement. Well, I don't know what it is, but some days I feel just as weak as a kitten. Oh, oh it sort of comes on me all of a sudden. I was just saying to my wife this morning, I says to her, I says... I want uh, to see Dr. Christian. Oh, yes, sir. Will you sit down? There's one patient ahead of you. Well, I haven't time to sit down. Well, Dr. Christian's busy right now. Can I do anything for you? I'm Otto Kaufman. Well... How long will Dr. Christian be busy? Oh, perhaps 20 minutes or half an hour. Oh, uh, is this uh, gentleman the one who's ahead of me? Yes, Mr. Morrow. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Morrow, but I have to see Dr. Christian at once. I'm very busy. I'm an impresario, and Oh, I... don't worry. Dr. Christian will cure you of that in 24 hours. Why, he's the best... But that... that's my business. In other words, I'm a theatrical manager, and I have to you see You mean Dr. you put on shows? Yes, I put on shows. I'm here There was to a see... fellow that came to River's End here about two years ago, put on a show. Don't know him, do you? No, no, He I... did magic tricks. One of his best tricks was sawing a woman in half. But I... It was all a fake, though, because I saw her on the street the next day. If you don't mind. Well, Otto, what's the delay this time? Am I to be kept sitting in the car all day? I'm sorry, Sigrid, but Christian is busy. He'll be busy for 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, but I can't possibly wait for 20 or 30 minutes. It's absurd. Then you'd better talk to this young lady here. My dear, if you'll take my name into Dr. Christian, I'm quite sure he'll see me at once. I'm Sigrid Holmquist. Oh, not Sigrid Holmquist, the singer. Yes. And tell Dr. Christian that Miss Holmquist isn't accustomed to being kept waiting. Otto, will you please leave this to me? Tell him I should like to see him as soon as possible. Well, I don't know whether I dare to bother him, but I'll try. It's Judy. May I come in? Yes, come in, Judy. I should have known. It's quite useless to ask you to do anything. Well, I've been trying, haven't I? Very trying. It isn't my fault that the man is busy. Dr. Christian, how are you? Well, well, Miss Holmquist. How delightful to see you. I wasn't sure you'd remember me. It's been more than four years since we met in Minneapolis. Of course I remember you. How could I forget with your name in all the papers and... This is Mr. Kaufman. He came out with me from New York. How do you do, Doctor? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Kaufman. He's going to stay until I open my concert tour in the city. Well, well. Stand off there and let me look at you. Well, you're quite a different person from the little girl I knew in Minneapolis. What have you been doing with yourself? Oh, studying, traveling, concertizing. London, Paris, Vienna... My, my... Are you on your way to the city now? Oh, no, my tour doesn't start for two weeks. I'm planning to remain here in River's End and rest. I've leased the Cronin place. Oh, you're going to be here in River's End? Well, I have someone who must meet you. Oh, oh uh, Mrs. Spears. Oh, yes, Doctor. She's the president of the Women's Club, and... Uh, Mrs. Spears, this is the famous singer, Secret Homequist. Oh. oh, you don't know how happy I am to meet you. I heard you at the Metropolitan Opera in New York last winter, in Cock Thank you. Oh, it was you. wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so and, much. And uh, Mrs. Spears, Mr. Kaufman. I'm delighted. How do you do? Miss uh, Holmquist is going to stay here in our village until her concert season opens. Oh, why, that's wonderful. Uh, I wonder if I dare ask you something, Miss Holmquist. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Even if she says no, she can't say it loudly. She has to be careful of her voice. <laughs> well, I... Uh, we're giving a charity bazaar. I was just talking to Dr. Christian about it. And it would be marvelous if you'd sing for us. 
Oh, I, I know it's presumptuous even to ask you, but I... When is your bazaar? Why, two weeks from last night. I'm afraid that would be impossible. Uh, Miss Holmquist sings in the city on the following evening. Oh, Otto, it isn't impossible. There's no reason at all why I shouldn't sing. And it's for charity. It's for our free nursing service. You see, Otto? I'll be very happy to sing for oh, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, <laughs> I'll be done. <laughs> oh, Hank, I'm sorry. I almost forgot all about you. That's all right. I was just listening. You know, she's the funniest girl I ever seen. Why, would you believe it? A second before you came out of your office, she was raving around here, madder than a wet hen. And oh, now... Oh, she wasn't really mad, Hank. That was temperament. Secret Holmquist is a famous artist. Do you have to have uh, temperament to be famous? No, you don't have to, but it's surprising how it helps. <laughs> now, let's see. You started to tell me that... Oh, yes, yes. Well, it's this way, Doc. When I got up this morning, I was fine. Felt real chipper. But along about oh, 10 o'clock, I... Yes, Susan? Secret Holmquist is in town. That's right. She was just in here, I but... saw her getting into her car. And do you know who was with her? Otto Kaufman, the impresario. Oh, think of it. Right here in River's End, the man who's been responsible for the success of more artists than any other person <laughs> in America. Right. All right, Susan, but calm down. Oh, Dr. Christian, don't you see? This is my opportunity. If I went to New York, he wouldn't even talk to me, let alone listen to me sing. But now he's right here, where I can meet oh, him. Oh, so that's why you're so excited. <laughs> wouldn't you be if you knew your big chance had come? Dr. Christian... Could you arrange to introduce me to him? Get him to hear my voice? Well, I don't know about getting him to hear your voice, but I'm sure I could arrange for you to meet him. Will you do that for me, Dr. Christian? Right away? It means so much to me. Everything. I'll talk to him as soon as I get a chance. But now I'm going to have to ask you to run along. You see, I, I have patients waiting to see me. All right, Doctor. But you sure you won't forget? No, no, I won't forget. <laughs> I sure have to apologize, Hank, for all these interruptions. Uh, you were going to say that... When I come in, I was going to say there was something the matter with me. But darned if it isn't gone now. If I may break in for a moment at this point, there really is something the matter with Hank and something that Vaseline hair tonic will correct. His hair is rough, dry, tousled, and unkempt from constant exposure to the outdoor air. But because Hank works on a farm is no reason he should look any less well-groomed than his city brother. For Vaseline hair tonic is on sale everywhere, in the villages as well as the city drugstores. To improve the texture of the hair and keep the scalp pink and healthy... Massage Vaseline hair tonic into it at least once a week and shampoo with a mild soap. Then each morning, instead of slicking it down with water, constant wetting only dries the hair and makes it more unruly, brush a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic into it to restore the sheen and keep the hair in place for the day. This is a quick and easy thing to do. It costs you very little, too, as each bottle of Vaseline hair tonic contains enough for six to ten massages as well as daily grooming. Vaseline hair tonic comes in two sizes at 40 and 70 cents. We suggest you try a bottle and see for yourself how its use improves the appearance of stubborn, unruly hair. We take you back now to the story of Dr. Christian with Gene Hersholt, famous Hollywood star in the title role. The time is two weeks later and we find ourselves again in the doctor's reception room. It is early evening, and the doctor has a caller. Oh, come in, Susan, come in. It is still raining hard. Ooh, as hard as ever. I don't think it's going to let up. Dr. Christian, have you talked to Mr. Kaufman yet about me? No, I haven't, Susan. Oh, you promised me you would. Well, he hasn't been in town since that day two weeks ago. He's been in the city. He'll be here tonight. It said so in the paper. And it said he'd be flying back to New York day after tomorrow. Oh, I, I'm so afraid something will happen and I won't get to see him. You'll be sure to introduce me to him this evening, won't you? Well, aren't you expecting a lot from one interview, Susan? 
Mr. Kaufman probably talks to dozens of ambitious youngsters every day and engages very few. But I have something more than just ambition. I can really sing. I, I don't mean to boast, but it's true. Hello? This is Dr. Christian speaking. Yes, I'll wait. And as I told you, Susan, Mr. Kaufman might be too busy even to listen. Oh, hello, Miss Holmquist. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Uh-huh. Yes, I was wondering if you ought to come out on a night like this. Oh. Well, that all depends. It may be only some little temporary condition. Yes, I think I'd better run over and see you. All right. All right, goodbye. Dr. Christian? Hmm? You can't let her sing. What? You've got to tell her she must stay at home, that she mustn't risk hurting her voice. What are you talking about? Keep her at home, and I'll go on. I'll sing, and Mr. Kaufman and those music critics will be in the audience, and they'll oh, hear me... Oh, now, and... Susan. But as long as she has a cold... Well, I don't know that she has a cold. You can tell her so. You can tell her it would be dangerous to sing. Oh, I can't do anything like that. Why not? What difference would it make to her? Singing here tonight isn't important to her, but it is to me. Dreadfully important. The most important thing in my life. No, no, no. It's out of the question. Oh, if I could only make you understand what it means to me. All my life, ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted to sing for Otto Kaufman. But I knew I couldn't. I knew I couldn't get to him. It was just something to dream about. It couldn't ever come true. And now it can come true. It can come true if you'll only help me a little. I know how you feel, Susan. I've had dreams like that myself. I'd do anything to help you, but Then I give me a break. That's all I ask. Just a chance. She's had her break. Why can't I have mine? Look, Doctor. I've got on my evening dress. I'm all ready. I can step right up on the platform... The paper said she was going to sing Carol Nomi. I know every note of it. And suppose you fail. I won't. I won't fail. I can't. Hello? Yes? Yes, tell Miss Holmquist I'm leaving right this moment. Susan, you'll be ready if, if anything should happen. I'll be I... waiting, Dr. Christian, to go on and sing. An hour later, practically every man, woman, and child in River's End was crowded into the high school auditorium to hear the great Swedish-American diva, all unconscious of her indisposition and the little local girl waiting in the wings to take her place. And while we, too, wait with the crowd, I'd like to say a few words about one of the most valuable uses for Vaseline petroleum jelly. Your hands betray your age, and yes, your condition of servitude. In other words, if you are a worker like most of us, your occupation, whether housework or something else, takes its toll of your hands. But don't be discouraged. The most inexpensive remedy for ugly, red, work-roughened hands is a ten-cent bottle of Vaseline jelly, applied regularly each night and at times during the day, after dishwashing, for example. This familiar home product will help eliminate chapped skin and roughness. Why don't you get a bottle or tube, if you prefer, and keep it for your own private use? Now I see the crowd is getting impatient. It's past the starting hour for our charity concert. Oh, there's Otto Kaufman coming into the hall. And gentlemen, this evening you're going to hear a great artist, a voice comparable to Jenny Lynn. Why, when I for... Oh, good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Kaufman. Uh, Dr. Christian, may I present Montgomery Mason, music critic of The Courier, and Richard Van Dyke of The Times. How do you do, Doctor? I'm glad to know you, thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Kaufman, I wonder if I could uh, see you alone just for a minute. Judy. Judy. Oh, hello, Sue. Mm, your dress is lovely. You look so sweet. Oh, Judy, I, I'm so happy. I'm going on. I'm going to sing for Mr. Kaufman and those other men. Tonight's the beginning of my career. I'm going to be a great star. Oh, Judy. Ladies and gentlemen, as usual, I've been picked to do the speech making. <laughs> well, this time it'll be brief. However, I have to tell you that this evening, Miss Holmquist felt she was catching cold. 
Now, you all realize how carefully a singer must guard against cold. Oh, Judy, it's coming true. And with I'm going the, on. the help of our popular Dr. Christian, however, Miss Holmquist finds she is now able to appear. We owe her a big debt of gratitude. Now, for her first selection tonight, Miss Holmquist has chosen Caranome from the opera Rigoletto. Miss Sigrid Holmquist.
Thank you, my friend. I'm so happy to be here. I have your dear, kind Dr. Christian to thank for it. And so for you and him, I sing, I love you truly. singer bows and vanishes behind the curtain, reappears and bows again and again. Finally, the applause subsides, and gradually the enthusiastic audience drifts out of the room until only one person is left, a little girl in a crumpled party dress. <laughs> Susan. Susan, my dear child. Oh, Susan, you mustn't take it too hard, so. Let me ask you something. Did you like the way she sang? Oh, she, she was beautiful, but... Yes, she did sing beautifully. Much more beautifully than when I knew her four years ago. Susan, I want to tell you something about Secret Homequest. Like you, she had ambitions. She went to New York without money, without experience. Day after day, she made the rounds of manager's offices. I most often wouldn't even see her. The few who didn't listen to her said she didn't have a voice. One of them was Otto Kaufman. But, but he discovered her. Yes, but a long time later. She sang in restaurants, not very good restaurants, and anywhere she could find work. The crowds booed her and made fun of her by the way she dressed and her accent and her, her highbrow music. And all the time she was saving and pinching so that she could take lessons. Finally, she won a little scholarship. Not much, but enough to enable her to study. For years, her life was a struggle, a, a fight to make ends meet, to learn languages and, and diction and opera roles, all the things that are necessary for a great singer to gain recognition. And you spoke about her getting a break. Do you see? Yes, I see. You aren't ready yet, Susan. Someday you will be, but not now. If you had sung tonight and failed, and you would have failed, it might have been that you'd be so hurt that you'd never try again. Oh, there you are, Dr. Christian. Uh, we have to be going now, Dr. Christian. Well, I... I hope you've enjoyed your bazaar as much as we've enjoyed you having us with us. <laughs> oh, Miss Holmquist, there's a little girl who got a great deal out of hearing you sing. Susan Miller. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I did. Oh, I'm so glad, darling. So, your name is Susan Miller. How sweet. You must come to the city and hear me tomorrow evening. You too, Doctor. Now come backstage, both of you, after the concert. 
Well, good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Miss Holmquist. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I love all of you. Oh, she is a great artist, isn't she? I wonder if, after all her success, she still gets a thrill out of singing and still likes to act. Likes to act? Hmm. So well that she hardly ever stops. <laughs> And so we take leave of Dr. Christian, but not of his lovely hometown, River's End. We have one more stop to make, and it's at the home of the local train dispatcher. Oh, oh. Oh, my goodness, the baby. There, there, there. Was his little heart broken? What's the matter, darling? Oh, my little lamby pie. Come to your mumsy. <laughs> the good boy. Did he want to get up? Oh, he's mummy's fine boy. Oh? oh, so that's what's the matter. Well, you never mind, darling. Mumsy will fix. Now, let's see. First, we'll take these big safety pins out. There. Now, we'll fold this sole. Now, we'll put this nice, soothing, Vaseline borated jelly on his little tender skin. <laughs> there. We'll spread it all over. Doesn't that feel soft and soothing, son? No more chafing or irritation for you, young fellow. <laughs> there now. We'll just put these great, big, strong safety pins right in here. <laughs> and upsy-daisy. <laughs> in maternity hospitals and private homes alike, Vaseline borated jelly is the approved product for use in keeping baby skin clear and free from chafing and other skin irritation. Vaseline borated jelly is a combination of Vaseline white jelly and boric acid. Together they make a sterile treatment that is harmless and efficacious. A tube of Vaseline borated jelly should be kept with the baby's things for his exclusive use. When you purchase any Vaseline product, be sure to look for the trademark Vaseline on the package. If you don't see it, you are not getting the genuine article. Prices mentioned on this program apply only in the United States. On today's program, Miss Rosemarie Broncato, brilliant young American star of the Chicago Opera Company, now on an extended concert tour of the United States, sang the role of Sigrid Holmquist. Next Sunday at this same hour, the makers of Vaseline Products will present Chapter 5 in the Chronicles of Dr. Christian of River's End with Jean Hersholt, famous Hollywood star in the title role. Jean Hersholt appears on this program through the courtes courtesy of 20th Century Fox, whose picture Heidi, in which Jean Hersholt appears with Shirley Temple, is still playing at theaters everywhere. Arthur Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.